Hello, hello, my friends, and uh, welcome back to another episode of the Predators podcast on WWPR Tampa Bay. Uh, my name is Neil Fox. I am the president for life of the furry fandom, democratically elected, of course. And with me, as always, is... Hello, hello, this is Link Labrador. And I'm Chip Prince. Welcome, welcome. So our guest today, like you said, uh, Link Labrador, who uh, our listeners will know as the Furry Vice President, and then our new guest, uh, who is uh, first time on the program, is Chip Raps. Uh, that is your alias, from what I understand, and you are from mm -hmm. the country of Poland, is that right? Yes, exactly. I am also not a furry. Oh, you're not a furry? Interesting. No. Uh, well, that is fascinating. Um, a non-furry in a furry discord? Okay. And quite a story. Yeah. No. Uh, you know, uh, before we get into the uh, before we get into the interview about Furry Valley, and um, the <laughs> quite frankly, uh, cartoonishly evil, in my opinion. Oh yeah. Things that they did in that server. Uh, just just to give our listeners a little preview, um, pedophilia, i.e., sex with children, uh, zoophilia, sex, sex with, with animals. animals. Necrophilia, sex with dead animals, uh, just 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 the worst things that a human being can do. Um, so before we get into that, Chip, if you could just describe, um, I, I'm really curious about this. So you said you're not a furry. So how did you get into a furry server? Again, a server being basically like a big group chat, essentially. So a place where people can come and talk, play games together, uh, talk about their day, talk about, you know, their favorite characters, whatever. Generally speaking, people who join these things are already part of what we call the furry fandom. So if you're not, I'm, I'm really curious how you found Furry Valley in the first place. Uh, it all started with a um, Furry Valley uh, server on a platform called Telegram. Ah. Telegram is just like Discord. It's it's just a different way of communication. Sure. Yeah. Um, people may have heard about Telegram on the news because it was actually built by some people from Ukraine. And um, interestingly enough, it's a, it's a really strong free speech platform. So uh, Telegram has basically no moderation. They, they, they only take things off of Telegram that are illegal. So things like child pornography, for example, uh, they will take that type of stuff down because they have to, to operate in the United States. But other than that, they basically allow anything on the platform. And well, so, not cryptocurrency scams. Uh, good. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, so, uh, but again, you know, that's, that's the type of thing that it is illegal content and therefore they, uh, they don't allow it on the platform. So, uh, you were on this platform, Telegram, which is a, a mobile app. And uh, you found a Furry Valley server on that platform? Mm -hmm, exactly. Uh, I am using Telegram for my personal computer. Mm, okay, interesting. So uh, what happened? Um, how did you get into the Furry Valley uh, sphere of influence, we'll say? <laughs> well, the Furry Valley offers multiple servers, group chats that offer different topics to talk about. Interesting. Okay. The so... one that I was especially about is the safe for work. The the group that was basically clean, hmm. if I can say that. Sure, sure. Um, I could, I could. Uh, I'm, I'm imagining like maybe a, a small group study at a church, for example, where it's kind of it's you have your big, you know, service where everybody gets together, but then you would also have your smaller groups like a Sunday school type thing where where you might have you know ten or fifteen people. Is that kind of what you're talking about? I don't know. <laughs> I was always a loner. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. So you found this safe for work server where people uh, safe for work being uh, just like fully uh, clean pictures. So mm -hmm. you know, no swearing, no pornography, nothing. Got it. Got it. So you got into this from a perspective of I want the uh, only the only the clean stuff. Uh, that's yes, really, I... that's really interesting. Okay, so uh, then what happened? Um, how how did you uh, how did you get drawn in? Let's say. <laughs> I think it's called anecdote. I don't know. Did you ever hear 
curiosity killed the cat. Curiosity killed the cat? Yeah, that's <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, I wanted to research a little bit the furry fandom. Oh. So I decided to join the group chat. Interesting, interesting. Okay, so you joined the group chat for furries, and then what happened? Uh, the owner of the group, Simba, has DM'd me. Mm -hmm. DM is a direct message, private message that nobody else can see. Mm -hmm. Just like a mail. Hmm. Uh, he said, Hey, Chip Rams, you've been quite active in the past month and always seem friendly and a good person to be around. Want to give the admin application a go? Which then there's a access to Google Doc mm. with staff application form. Gotcha. So kind of like a job application. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. So the, the owner of the group reached out to you and asked you to make a job application to be an admin or a moderator for the, uh, the gaming aspect of the server. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Um, well, uh, we are going to uh, take a quick break and we'll be right back. Hello, hello, my friends, and welcome back to The Predators Podcast, a presentation of WWPRAM out of Tampa Bay. Uh, welcome to the show, uh, my wonderful Labradors here, as usual. Hello, hello, welcome to back. It's great to be back. And uh, welcome to Chip, our guest for today. Hello. Hi, uh, so I understand that you guys have both worked for the Discord server known as Furry Valley, is that right? Yes. Mm hmm Okay. So Furry Valley, just for any of our listeners who are not familiar with it, because, you know, uh, the radio show is primarily not furries. So <laughs> Primarily normies. Primarily normies. So we'll just do a quick introduction to what the server is first. So, you know, anybody who's been in a group chat or, uh, you know, a WhatsApp group or Skype group or anything like that, they know what a group chat is. So a Discord server is kind of like a really, really big group chat. Uh, yes. How many people are in Furry Valley? Do you know? Uh, last I checked, it was like 5,000. Like 5,000 people? Is that about right? Yeah, I think that's right. Something like that. Okay. So somewhere around 5,000 people are in this server on an app called Discord. So what I would like you guys to do, if you can, is uh, introduce yourselves and tell us a bit about what you guys did for Furry Valley, and then we'll go from there, okay? Yes. Uh, let's see, do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Uh, name's Chip Raps, but only in real life, of course. Uh, I used to work as a tier 3 admin for Furry Valley. I used to host game events like Minecraft and VR. Oh, you, you were the VR, you were the Minecraft admin. I know you. It's been a while. <laughs> Uh, when it comes to shared tasks, me and the other friend that I cannot remember the name because my memory is like Swiss cheese, mm. uh, we had shared tasks like greeting the new users and sell sending LFGs. Mm. Yes, I remember that. Okay. So, uh, you were a tier 3 admin, what does that mean? Uh, tier 3 admin, somebody got it. Uh, I think Tier 3 is, from what I remember, uh, used to mainly host game events. Okay, sounds good. So then you go ahead and introduce yourself, yep. Link, and then uh, we'll go into your story after that. Okay, uh, I was also a Tier 3 admin, one of the first Tier 3 admins they had, and I hosted game events, primarily Monster Hunter and Monster Hunter and D&D. Monster Hunter and D&D, and, uh, okay, sounds good. So, uh, the primary, uh, person in our story, uh, for, from talking to both of you, the, the person that is going to come up the most is named Chris Bryant, or Symbolion. So, uh, if I could just ask you guys to both tell us just a summary of, uh, again, think about talking to your grandma or your mom or somebody who's, you know, they may not even know what furry is. So uh, <laughs> make, sure to, uh, make sure to explain your terms and, uh, and you guys go right ahead. Uh, you want to go first? Uh, you want to go first? Uh, fine. And furry, in my words, as a view of a Polish man, 
at first it was just a funny fandom of people who like dressing up as animals, drawing fictional anthropomorphic animals and stuff. Um, how do I exactly explain this? It's just a silly fan. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, at least that's what it was. Uh, let's let's look up the definition on like wiki for something so that we have uh, we have a common base of knowledge to go off of. Okay, so furry fandom on Google it says uh, this is a definition from the Oxford Languages Dictionary: an enthusiast for animal characters with human characteristics, in particular a person who dresses up in a costume such as a character or uses one as an avatar online. Yeah, okay. that sounds about right. So the furry fandom is a group of people who are fans of anthropomorphic animals or yes. animals with human characteristics. So for those who may not just... Again, a lot of people are not you know, as, as deep into the weeds as we are with furries. So uh, you could think of something like... Um, a character from Zootopia, for example, the movie that came out a few years ago where it's basically half human, half animal. And then you could go all the way on the left-hand side of, you know, just a human with cat ears, basically. But you could also go all the way on the opposite side, and it's basically just an animal that can make human-like facial expressions like characters from The Lion King, for example. Correct. So uh, now that we've established what a furry is... Uh, tell us about uh, the furry community on Fairy Valley and uh, Mr. Symbolion or Chris Bryant himself. I mean, Chris Bryant has a habit of making it look friendly and nice and happy, dappy, until you until you uh, anger him, mm -hmm. and then he turns into Jack, Mr. Jekyll. <laughs> turns into Mr. Jekyll. Yes, from Jekyll and Hyde. Ah, okay, got it. Uh, okay. Uh, it's fine. Uh, you're cutting out. Could you please repeat? My, uh, my partner is sitting a bit far away from the microphone. Would you be able to, uh, would you be able to, uh, raise your voice a bit, my dear? Yes, my dear. Okay, so, again, like I was saying, Simba is like Mr. Jackal... <clears throat> It's like Mr. Jackal and Mr. Hyde. Friendly, approachable, in till you either... <clears throat> Friendly, approachable, until you piss him off, basically. Yeah, I remember that. I've turned up the gain on the uh, microphone a bit. Can you hear us better? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. If you need us to adjust the gain or the volume or whatever, just let us know. Um, it's fine now, it's fine now. Okay, great. <clears throat> so, uh, Jekyll and Hyde is an interesting way to describe it. Um, how would you describe it, Chip? Well, whenever Simba was talking with me, he was using this, like... <sighs> What's the word for it? Fruity? <laughs> Fruity? I don't know. He was talking in this, like, overly, suspiciously friendly way. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Tell That's me more about that. pretty common. <laughs> Yeah, just like the friend uh, over here described. He was super friendly and everything until you pissed him off. Right. He was berserk. Hmm. Okay. So, how would you describe the way that Simba brings people in? Because from what I've heard from, especially talking to uh, Link about it, Yep. Uh, the way that he describes it to me is he sees it similar to a cult-like mentality. Of you know, uh, th there's a couple of different uh, pieces that go together with a um, the the way that most cults work, and what you're describing with Jekyll and Hyde is actually very similar to a uh, a cult tactic called love bombing. Do you know what that means? I do. I doubt our audience does, though. Right. So love bombing is something that's very common in cults or cult-like groups where as soon as you join, there's just tons and tons of positive attention from the members of the group, especially the important members of the group. Yes. And so, um, especially for people who may not have a strong social circle, yep. or may not have strong social skills, 
it, it could be the first time or, you know, one of only a few times in their life that they've experienced these kinds of positive affirmation of, you know, oh, you know, we're so glad to have you here. You know, we, and it, it's not bad to be welcoming to people, but it, the, what makes it love bombing is when it is specifically disingenuous, when it's done for a nefarious reason. Correct. Okay, so <clears throat> pass the mic back to Chip. Yep. Uh, when it comes, just when you mention the love bonding, the my start of this adventure thing started when Simba has the end me, oh. inviting me, saying that I've been quite active in the past month walking, and always seemed friendly and a good person. Uh, marking those words friendly and good just looks just like you said, trying to be overly friendly. Mm -hmm. And then said that uh, <laughs> he asked if I want to give the admin application a go. Then he sent me a Google Docs link. Uh -huh. Okay. <clears throat> so he sent you a Google Doc link, and what happened then? I responded to him that I'll take a look later. He responded that super, let me know once you're doing, fill it in, in. good luck, heart emoji. Right. <laughs> Got it, got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty typical. I, I fill the application. After uh, some time, hold up, let me quickly check the message. Yeah, this conversation started on October 5th, and then on October 13th, uh, he responded, Hey, just sending a quick message to congratulate you on passing the Fairy Valley application. Mm. Okay. Then he sent me another Google Doc and told me to please read it carefully. Mm, okay. Uh, the link contained like some basic info administration protocols. Hmm, like, I don't, I don't know if it's star stuff or not. I don't but know. It was a pretty lengthy uh, book. Well, let's see, because, uh, so you joined at what time? You said October of what year? Uh, he DM'd me at October 5th, 5th, sorry. Then, he, once I filled it in, he responded at October 13th. Mm -hmm. uh, of what year? Uh, 2022. 2022. Ah, okay. 2022. Right. So you joined Fairy Valley quite a few years before that, right? Yes. Okay, so uh, I don't remember the exact year that it was, but was it like 2015, 16, something like that? Something like that. Okay, so then he experienced a much later version of what you experienced. Yes. So uh, what he's asking is, was his experience typical out of the people that you saw being hired into the server? Yes, more or less. It always starts the same way. Right. So describe that process. Uh, the process of the recruitation, exactly, or which process? Right. Uh, uh, just your experience of being recruited into this uh, into this server. Ah, yeah. Uh, after uh, filling out the and passing the application form and reading the lengthy tutorial thing, I don't know how to describe it. Guide. Yeah, uh -huh. let's call it guide. Uh, I had to join a Discord server, the Furry Valley Discord server, and then I was I told to join a Furry Valley admin Discord server. Mm. Okay, got uh, it. So they have their own dedicated admin server now. That's new. On the admin server, there is a special channel for uh, new trialists, if I remember mm. correctly. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, a special channel just for new people who had joined? Okay, yep. and, and then what happened? Uh, I remember there was a big message welcoming and congratulating everyone that has passed. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't exactly remember what what was written on the message. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm sure that we can find somebody who is uh, willing to talk to us about that specifically. Um, so uh, let's accelerate the story a little bit. So you uh, you were contacted, invited to become an admin. You mm -hmm. made an application. You uh, were jo you joined the admin server. And then, uh, what happened then? Uh, after the things I said, uh, all new staff members had to fill out a, like an introduction thing 
like some Discord servers have a channel, special channel where new users can introduce themselves, like type of basic things like age, nickname, interests. <clears throat> what is sorry? And where are they from, for example? Mm -hmm. I remember on Freeval it was the users had to state, or should I say new staff members had to state their age, country of origin, and a general quick hello letter, something like that. That's good. Okay. Well, and my understanding based on what uh, Link has told me, and I'm, I'm curious because uh, you were an admin uh, a couple of years after he was kicked out. So you may have new information that we haven't heard yet. Uh, my understanding based on talking to Link is that there was a big issue with pedophilia in this server, correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Also zoophilia. Right. So uh, I'm, I'm curious about that because you're saying that you had to put in your age to be an admin, but my understanding is that you don't have to put in your age to be just a regular user. Is that right? Correct. Correct. Mm, okay. So, what type of uh, what type of issues did that cause? Uh, for example, I don't know if the friend over here uh, was in the times where underage admins were allowed. I was. Oh Jesus! It underage, was frequent. Underage admins. Wait, yes. tell me about that. Uh, yes, underage. Uh, it's just that underage admins. Go into more detail, please. Turns out there were... <clears throat> uh, Simbo was very, very loose about who could be an admin. He didn't generally care if they were underage or not. Right, because you would assume that in a server where you're talking about you know, adult topics, adult roleplay, adult... Oh, they had a completely dedicated server for that. Yes. Hmm. Okay. It, they have, it's called the After Dark. Okay, uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna pause the recording for just a minute, and then we'll uh, we'll come back after a commercial break. And welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, for listening to that shilling of Casper mattresses or whatever we uh, whatever we're selling today. And uh, so we are currently talking with Chip and uh, the vice president of the furry fan at Link Labrador. Yes. Who both have a lot of experience with working with the Furry Valley Discord server. So, uh, just a really quick recap for the listeners: um, Furry Valley is essentially just a really large group chat, you know, something like five thousand people. Yep. And l both Link and Chip have been uh, administrators or moderators for this chat. So, yes. you know, removing things that are against the rules, uh, bringing new people in, that kind of thing. So um, I actually brought up something that I think might help us uh, focus, our, um, focus our conversation. So here's what I got here. So this is from a website called uh, Jan, uh, janjalilich.com. And um, this is the International Authority on Cults and Coercion. And so what this is, is it's basically just a list of different cult-like uh, activities okay so not every cult is going to have every single one of these things but considering the stories that i've heard about fairy valley it sounds like fairy valley basically has all of them plus about a thousand more so uh yes what i what we can do to kind of focus our conversation is i'm just going to read off the uh, i'm going to read off the sentence of this uh this author describing what she uh would call a cult-like practice and then you guys tell me your experience of whether or not you experienced something similar. And if you did experience something similar, then just give us an example. So, you know, if, it, if it's something like, you know, well, the, the group is very controlling. And then you would be like, hmm, well, yes, Prairie Valley is a pretty controlling group. And here is an example of why that is. Okay? Okay. All right. So here's the first, uh, here's the first characteristic. It is... The group displays an excessively zealous and unquestioning commitment to its leader. Yes. Regards yes, his belief system, ideology, and practices as the truth and as law. Yeah, he's... Simba to a T. 
Right, so tell me about that. Mm. Well, Elab, how do we put it in words that the audience would understand? Because that... Tell, uh, tell it as a story. So again, uh, what works really well for the radio or TV is um, to tell a story to illustrate the point. Yes. So, for example, if I was telling a story about a cult leader from the Mormon church, what I might say is something like, you know, well, the, the Mormon church can be really controlling, and uh, you're not allowed to question the leaders of the church. So if some type of abuse, such yep. as um, uh, grooming of minors, if, if something like that goes on, like what happened in the Catholic church... Uh, you're not allowed to question the leader about that practice. Okay, so story number one of Simba grooming children. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Let's see, Simba would, ha Simba would frequently have pets, and to have pets in the furry fandom is to have people that are submissive to you. Think sub-dom relationship if you're old enough for that, I'm sure. If not, then... If not that, then... I don't know. I've lost track. Go on. <laughs> okay. Uh, here, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna start this part of the uh, story over again. Uh, so, <clears throat> here is the, uh, the cult-like characteristic. And uh, we're gonna have Chip give his example first. Again, yep. use a story as an example. So, like, mm -hmm. if, uh, so in this specific art, in this specific instance, we're talking about displaying an unquestioning commitment to the leader. So, what you guys would want to do is give an example of a time when Simba asked for unquestioning loyalty. Literally every day. Okay. Mm, Simba always loves affection. Yes. Mm. Tell me he about loves that. the sweet little. I, I don't know the English words, sweet talk, mm. you know, when, whenever you, he likes when you uh, talk constantly sweet, if that's the proper term. Sure, yeah. Uh, so ta him talking sweetly to someone or someone talking sweetly to him? Uh, vice versa. In both? Okay, yeah. got it. Yes, in both ways. Right. So this is another. Uh, I'm sure we'll get to it when we're going down the uh, when we're going down the list. But um, one of the things that is a very common cult-like uh, practice is uh, you can only say things that are positive. You cannot yes. say anything that is negative, whether about the leader is in particular, but also just about the group in general. That was pretty big. That was one of the biggest uh, issues Simba had. With <clears throat> Simba had just in general you ban people on the spot if they didn't talk positive about his precious furry valley mm -hmm. okay so uh, let's uh, let's go back to the um, let's go back to this this uh, point here I'm going to read the point and then we're gonna f uh, we're gonna throw it to you Chip and you tell a story or an anecdote that illustrates it um, from your perspective. Something that you saw that illustrates the point, okay? So, mm -hmm. uh, the first characteristic of a cult-like group from this website, which is the International Authority on Cults and Coercion, uh, the first characteristic is, the group displays an excessively zealous and unquestioning commitment to its leader and regards his belief system, ideology, and practices as the truth and as law. So, Chip, what is an example of something that you saw that would be similar to that? Uh, the only example I saw so far is the people acting on Twitter. Mm. Social media in general, if I can say. Sure, yeah. Uh, people, what, do you, what do you mean? People that display affection for uh, certain ideologies tend to scream at their political enemies just for uh, displaying other values like believing in other uh, <laughs> okay now i know how to describe it basically people tend get t 
tend to get very angry at people who dis uh, who believe in different ideologies just for expressing their opinions. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a very common cult-like mentality of, you know, oh, well, you have a difference of opinion, so you must be wrong. You must be evil to have a difference of opinion. Yes, yes. So what is an example that you can think of, Link, of Furry Valley uh, displaying an excessively zealous and unquestioning commitment to its leader, Chris Bryant or Symbolite? Uh, literally banning anybody who has anything negative to say whatsoever, depend <clears throat> as well as if you have friends, he'll ban your friends as well. Wow. Okay. So that would be an example of um, a process that many different cults do mm -hmm. uh, that is, um, uh, for example, in the Jehovah's Witness faith, it's called disfellowshipping. So disfellowshipping means you're not allowed to talk to any person who is a Jehovah's Witness. Uh, disfellowshipping, it basically means that it's essentially a sin in their belief system to talk to someone who has been disfellowshipped. And so from I see. what I understand is that uh, Fairy Valley does something very similar where you won't just ban you, the person who you know, spoke up about abuse or spoke up about what they saw, they'll also just ban everyone else connected with you as well. Correct. Got it. Okay. So the second uh, point on this website is... Oh, he'll also ban anyone who finds out any information and questions the information at hand. That's, uh, that's cult-like behavior, that's yeah. for sure. Uh, so the second point on this website is questioning doubt and dissent are discouraged or even punished. So, yes. So, Chip, we're going to bounce it back to you. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the statement is, questioning doubt and dissent are discouraged or even punished. Uh, does that sound like something that Furry Valley would do? Mm, yes. Okay, so give me an example. Uh, as an example, I'm going to bring up the social media again and the politics. Sure, sure. So, uh, my guess, based on what you're saying, is that... Um, there was like one specific type of politics or ideology that everyone had to agree with. Yes. Yep. Yes. Got it. Okay. Simba tried to orient the ideology of the server about uh, liberal left. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. He did. So, so wait, so wait, not just a pedophile, but a democratic pedophile. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like bad people on all sides. Anyway, um, so uh, the next point on this list is, quote, mind-altering practices such as meditation, chanting, speaking in tongues, uh, debilitating work routines, or denunciation sessions are used in excess and serve to suppress doubts about the group and its leaders. Okay, so Chip, uh, does Furry Valley do anything like this of, you know, making people do really difficult tasks or, yes, um, yes, absolutely, yes. Okay. Uh, on the server, the admin uh, server, there was a system that forced the staff team to collect XP points. XP points are experience points, like in a video game. Okay. The more you do stuff, the more you gain the points. And basically, the admins were forced to send new members invite messages, mm, okay. send members uh, to event invites mm -hmm. and in general committing other like bullshit oh sorry basically if user does not meet the quota of xp required per week he gets booted out yes wow. interesting okay so so what you're saying if i'm not mistaken is you're saying that like each member of the admin team had to do like a certain number of invites a certain number of tasks each week yes Yes, tasks. Interesting. Okay, because, yeah, that's, very again, very similar to, Je to Jehovah's Witnesses as well, where uh, to stay in the group, to be a Jehovah's Witness, you have to go out and evangelize for the group ev basically every day. For Jehovah's Witnesses, it's five days a week that you're required to go out and knock on doors or stand on a street corner or whatever. Yeah. And so Makes sense. 
you're essentially being asked to do the same thing just in a digital space rather than a physical street corner. Correct. Yeah. Yes, but instead of knocking on people's doors, evangelizing them, you invite them to a video game event. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yes. Yes, yes. See, see. Now, let me let me explain because. We're, we're talking a bit in the abstract, so let, let me bring it back down to earth for the, uh, the moms and dads and grandmas of the audience who, you know, they, 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 they probably only know about video games in as much as their grandchildren play video games. Correct. So, uh, and I want you to imagine, listeners, uh, someone coming up to your grandchild on a digital space, so, you know, a chat or something like that, and saying... You know, hey, uh, join join this cult. Uh, and by the way, we have great we have great Minecraft uh, Minecraft sessions. So you know, just join this cult, and you can have lots of fun with us in Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically how it works. Wow. Okay. Join the cult. <laughs> join the cult. We have cookies. Yes. We have joined the dark. Join the cult. We have video games. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay, so then uh, the next point on this website is the leadership dictates, sometimes in great detail, how members should act, think, and feel. Yes. For example, members must get permission to date, change jobs, or marry. Leaders prescribe what to wear, where to live, whether to have children, how to discipline children, and so forth. Okay, so this is more talking about a religion specifically. Yeah. Um, so let's put that in a context of like a Discord server. What they're talking about is... Um, Which Discord servers you can go in? Who, whose friends can you have exactly. in these Discord servers? Right. So it's not so much a... Di it's not dictation of like, oh, well, you have to wear this specific Purple. type of shirt or this uh, right this specific color but you have to act in a way that reflects well on the group correct got it okay uh the next one uh, i think <laughs> uh, i already know that you guys are going to agree with this one so uh but let's let's go through it so this one is specifically uh, f uh for the admins i think it says the group is elitist Claiming to be special, have an exalted status, its leader, and its members. Uh, does that sound like yes. something that you experienced? Yep. So give me an example, uh, Chip. Uh, about the elitism. Mm -hmm. mm, people in the staff discord usually, like we're talking always, as you mentioned earlier, very friendly. Mm -hmm. They were like constantly complaining about normal users doing this, doing that. Mm. Breaking mm -hmm. this rule, breaking that rule, constantly nagging them out. Uh, did they ever write the reasons. rules down? They always felt this like superiority. I also noticed that uh, among the hierarchy, 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 hierarchy. Yep. Yeah, uh, basically the admins were having tiers like, mm. like CEO, uh, co CEO. I don't know the English words. Mm -hmm. They were, they were like, it was a pyramid, mm. pyramid of power, just like in a normal work job. Right, right. Yeah, I, again, very common. Um, so what these, uh, what these groups are called specifically is called high control groups. So, you know, you go and you, uh, you go, you go to some churches, for example, and they're very low control groups. So, you know, they they might have a potluck on Saturday and they might say, well, bring some uh, bring some food for the potluck if you can. That's, exactly. That's a low control group. You know, Boy Scouts is another step up from that. So you know, Boy Scouts is it depends on the scout leader, but generally speaking, it's like a mid mid, mid control group. Yes. Of you know, you're expected to dress a certain way, but they're not going to you know excommunicate you and throw you out and make you destitute if you don't do it. Um, Whereas a high control group, which would be something like Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, you know, these types of things, uh, they will often control every part of your life. Not, not just, you know, when you're in the church, but they'll say, you know, oh, well, you know, you have to dedicate more and more time and money and resources to the group. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's see. The next point on this website is the group has a polarized, 
us versus them mentality, which may cause conflict with the wider society. Mm -hmm. Yep, mm -hmm. that sounds about right. Okay. Uh, well, we we are currently uh, five for five on these points, so uh, not looking good for uh, for Simba not running a cult. Um, <laughs> so uh, polarized us versus them mentality. So just to summarize from what I've heard Link talk about with this, uh, it's like you know, oh well, everybody should be part of our server and not part of our op our opponents or our our competing our competing server. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any uh, examples of something like that happening while you were there, Chip? Mm -hmm. uh, the server was constantly bragging about, not like, not bragging, should I say, I should say demonizing. Mm. They were demonizing people that they call trolls. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a specific word for that, people who broke rules in a very delicate way. Okay, uh, we're going to need to pause for one second and go back because you guys were talking over each other. And oh, uh, no, it's fine. It's again, it, learning how to be on the news is a skill. Uh, it's if you speak over someone, then neither of you can be understood. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back about a sentence or two. Just repeat what you said, Chip, and then we're going to go to Link so he can say what he just said. Okay. Okay. Uh, the server was demonizing trolls. Mm, okay. Or so-called troll, because troll, from a definition, is someone that likes to cause a lot of trouble to make people angry. Mm. That's the simplest uh, explanation that I can think of. Got it, got it. So for someone who isn't familiar with online trolling, you could think of this as a provocateur, a, a person who says mm -hmm. things to make other people angry on purpose. And so, yes. uh, now, of course, with just about any online community, you're going to have people come in and troll or, you know, say, oh, I hate you, oh, you're the worst, whatever. But uh, what I'm understanding you to say, Chip, is that the server is using the word troll to describe just anyone who is against the group. Is that right? Yes. Got it. Okay. Okay. So now let's pass it over to Link, and uh, I know you have been waiting on pins and needles to be able to speak, so go right ahead. Uh, there's a very specific word Simba came up with called anti-FV for anyone who is against Furry Valley. Got it. Okay, anti-FV. Is that something that was still being used when you were there, Chip? Mm, I didn't hear the term. Interesting. Okay. Uh, do you remember any specific terms that were used to describe, like, you know, oh, those are the bad people. Those are the, you know, those are the, those are the, the... The malcontents. Yes. <laughs> Usually, it was the word trolls. Got it. Because the troll is, uh, like, imagined always by everyone on the internet as the bad guys. Interesting, interesting. Okay. Well, uh, we are going to take another quick commercial break, and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back, my friends, to the Predators podcast on WWPR Tampa Bay. Uh, my name is Neil Fox, and just to recap real quick what we were just talking about in the previous segment, uh, we were going through a list of uh, cult-like behaviors on the International Authority of Cults and Coercion. Mm -hmm. And seeing how they fit in with a group online called Furry Valley. So again, Furry Valley is basically like a big group chat where there's somewhere around 5,000 people uh, that, uh, you know, will play games together, do voice chats, do text chats, that kind of thing. And um, so uh, let's continue and let's go on to the next point on the list. The leader introduces feelings of shame and or guilt in order to influence and control members. Often this is done through peer pressure and subtle forms of persuasion. So, Chip, um, does that sound like something that Furry Valley would do? Uh, the persuasion. Uh, members were often offered with a possibility to get promoted. Got it. With the amount of EXP, as I said earlier, XP being experience points gathered as in a video game mm -hmm. for doing certain tasks. 
Got it. Uh, member, the staff members were offered uh, advances from like, a, mm. let's say, tier two to tier three, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, this is uh, again just textbook cult like mentality of you know. Oh well, yes, you're all you're a you're a level you're a level one now. But if you put more money and time and effort into the group, then you can become a level one A. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. that's the thing. <clears throat> that's one of the biggest things is I managed. I was one of the first level three admins they ever had. Got when it. they revised the system. Okay, interesting. Um, hmm. uh, well, then let's let's see what the next point on the list is, and uh, we'll see how that tracks with your experience. So the next okay. one is uh, subservience to the leader or group. Subservience, since our friend here is uh, is from Poland, uh, subservience being uh, being under the authority of un- uh, uh, subservience to the leader or group requires members to cut ties with friends and radically alter their personal goals and activities that they had before joining the group. Now, Chip, does that sound like uh, does that sound like very valid to you? <laughs> mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay, give me an example. Uh, the game admins, ha- the game event admins had to perform these events on certain hours. There was a Google Excel spreadsheet or whatever it is called. I don't know the proper name. Mm-hmm. And there were certain hours pointed out. And this and this admin had to host an event in this and this game. Mm. Okay. An event as in a little party, a meetup. The activities were really varied. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. For me, the hours of events were always in, how to say it, not so great time. Mm. Right, right. Because well, being uh, uh, from Poland, your time zone is significantly different than the mm-hmm, United States. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, thank you for. <laughs> Thank you for recording at a weird hour for you. I appreciate it. I, I promise we are not a high control group. Um, we just have <laughs> evening. Our time is when we can the control. side effects. Yeah, the side effects of being an admin, right? or should I say, ex admin. Thank you, uh, thank you, time zones, right? And international time zones. Uh, for myself, working with the international time zones with events was the worst. I bet. I bet. Oh, 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 uh, well, I know you already agree with this next point from this website. It says, <clears throat> the group is uh, preoccupied with bringing in new members. Yes! <laughs> they yeah, tried kind of many obvious. different ways to do it. Got it. Yeah, yeah. So give me some examples. Uh, we'll start with Chip, and then we'll throw it back to you, Link. Okay. I'm going to bring my example of how it started. Simba noticed that I was typing some random stuff this and there on the group chat Mm -hmm. he said that i was friendly active using nice words to persuade me got it Hmm. interesting okay and uh what was your experience link my experience was back in the day they had uh specialized recruiting officers and stuff that would go into different discords would go through Add as many people as humanly possible, then get out of the Discord, and then see who showed up. Got it, got it. Frequently. Do they still do, do, they still do that? I am not aware of that. Okay, that's one of the... Hmm. Well, Discord is much more strict about spamming these days than it was in 2016. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that you, you'll get banned from Discord itself much faster today for doing that than you would back in the day. Well, so here's they how... They may have changed their tactics. Here's how Simba told people to do it. Mm-hmm. How did Simba tell people to do it? Simba told people how to do it by going in... T- by creating an alternate account using... Using uh, wire, using VPNs, make it look like you're from a nef- different network, different server, different country, and mm-hmm. then using an alt account to span as mem- many members as humanly possible, so you're never putting your own account at risk. Well, and that's a great opportunity for us to talk about our sponsor, ExpressVPN. <laughs> ExpressVPN is one of the best ways to keep your privacy intact online and make sure that... 
people like Simba Lion and Furry Valley cannot steal your financial information. Uh, for a VPN is a virtual private network, which uh, basically makes it look like your device or your computer is in a different place than you actually are. And uh, this is perfectly legal to do, and it's a way to protect your privacy. And uh, we, you can check out our all of our referral links are on our website, which is fox2028.com. All right, so uh, thank you very much for uh, for letting me shill that for a moment. And great segue, by the way. I, I, I love when you do product integration. Well done. Uh, next. Tak było, nie zmyślam. Next, it says, the group is preoccupied with making money. Uh, Chip, is that something that you observed? Preoccupied with making money? Mm-hmm. I am not sure. The okay. one thing I am sure about that Simba is into Findom. Findom standing as financial domination. Financial domination is a king, fetish, I don't know the proper name, where basically one of the partners has domination over one's uh, uh, money. Mm-hmm. Now, this I is, think that's the simplest way to describe it. This is something that was new to me just a couple of years ago, so let me let me describe it in a, um, in a simple way for the listeners, and then what we're going to do is go over to you Link, and you tell about your experience uh, observing Simba or Chris Bryant doing this yes. fin dom with people. Okay, yeah. So, like you said, financial domination is a kink or a fetish where um, essentially a person gives up control of their finances to another person. So you know, it's, it's kind, of a, kind of weird to wrap your head around the first time you hear about it because you're like, how is that... How is that something that would be sexual? That doesn't make any sense. But then uh, you you uh, you find out more about it, and for some people, that's just what works for them. And it's it's weird. It's it's uh, it's it's a very uh, very dangerous type of kink because it is very easy to be uh, manipulated if that is something that's happening. Um, so my understanding of how Simba does financial domination is he will have. People who are his slaves, quote the his word, slaves. Yes. Let, let me let me be clear for the listeners. I am not putting words in his mouth by calling them slaves. He himself calls them his slaves. He literally has a slave contract. What? Literally. Yes. Uh, uh, okay. Don't it's in the bullshit. kiwi farms. We haven't made it that far. Well, okay, so uh, we will definitely go over that in detail because that is fascinating. But just summarize, uh, what what do you mean? A, a contract to, to do what? Uh, a contract in agreement that he that the it, that the recipient individual. I uh, think Fifty Shades of Grey. If you read Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh yeah, because they did a contract in that book. Uh huh. Oh. Uh huh. Oh God! I so don't weird. know that book. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you're not missing anything. Uh, but it's it, kind of a dull read, but to sum it up... You've read Fifty Shades of Grey? Uh, this is a time re- to say, I plead the fifth. I I did not read it. <laughs> I watched a pitch meeting style video on it. Oh! A okay, synopsis. I've seen a, syn- a synopsis of Fifty Shades of Grey. Got it, okay. Because they did a synopsis on the movie. Sure, sure. So, of course, I know what it is. Got it, got it, got it. Got it. I, and I've read the thing. Sure, sure, sure. I, I thought you meant that you had read it, but no. Anyway. Okay, gotcha. So, uh, just for your uh, for your understanding and for the audience, Chip, um, uh, in the first Fifty Shades of Grey book, in the first book in the series, one of the big plot points is the female protagonist, Anastasia, signs a contract to be uh, the BDSM slave of the character Christian Grey. Yes. I am sorry, but I have no clue what BDSM is. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, well, I'm sure there's a word for it in Polish, but um, BDSM, let's define in a way that the FCC will allow. Okay. Uh, B- I, BD- let, me, let me take a stab at it. Sure. BDSM is a form of sexual kink, and it just... It is the official tag that you would research, you would look it up by. Bondage, 
The- Domination, sadomasochism. Oh. Yes. So bondage, tying up, discipline or domination. Yep. Of you know uh, I you know the one partner will tell the other partner what to do. Sadism, so inflicting pain on other people on purpose for sexual gratification, <sighs> and masochism, uh, enjoying it, <laughs> enjoying uh, enjoying that in a sexual way. Yes. So, yes, Maria, that sounds absolutely hellish. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I I would I would uh, struggle to think of a worse fate in life than to be uh, one of Chris Bryant's BDSM slaves. So yeah. Uh, Tell us, uh, tell us about what you saw. Now that we've defined the terms, tell us about what you saw, Link. Well, what I saw was Simba's pets. The generally people of high status within the server mm-hmm. that generally gave money to Simba via the Patreon, which he has Patreon supporters. Patreon. Okay, so that's a like a subscription service. Yes. So. Wait, Patreon allows Simba to have a account? Yep. Oh, well, uh, that's something that we need to change. Yeah, Patreon allows Simba to have an account. And that was one of the things of being an admin is you actually get access to a lot of the, uh, basically full access to the entire server. So either you're mm. an admin for the server or you're a Patreon member to the server. And Patreon members get full access to the server. Got it. Okay, so let me let me just recap for the listeners to make sure, uh, and I want to make sure I'm on the same page as well. So my understanding of what you're saying yep. is they're charging money to people uh, in exchange for status and influence in the server. Yes. Okay, got it. Uh, how much did they charge? Do you remember? I can't remember exactly how much it was. Like I know most ten or twenty, I think ten or twenty dollars a month. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, what we will do is we will um, before our next episode on Furry Valley. What we'll do is we will try to find this website on Patreon. Uh, this profile. I think I already Patreon. found it. You think you did? Okay. Well, yeah. um, go ahead and link that to me if you can. Uh, just link that to me in a private message, and uh, mm-hmm. I'll pull that up so we can take a look. Okay. Yes. Because I would be very happy to uh, go and talk to the delightfully responsive support staff at Patreon and let them know that one of the pages on their website is supporting a known child predator and sexual predator to animals. Uh, I'm pretty sure they would want to delete that from their website. I think so. Ah, okay, so we have $7.50 a month is what it says. Oh, furry... I'm sorry, this is really funny. It says, Furry Valley Guardian! Yes, that's the term. $7.50 a month. Access... Uh, here, I'm, I'm gonna... Uh, this is a freebie for you, Simba, okay? Normally I charge for doing voiceover, but uh, you can... you. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. We, we release all of our podcasts into the public domain, so I can't stop you from using this audio if you want. Okay. Here we go. Access to the Furry Valley Guardian section, including bonus perk store. Donate over $7.50 to get cookies used in the Furry Valley Guardian bonus perk store. One cookie per $1 extra. <laughs> what? Oh, scroll down. Is that the old? Uh, wow, this... they haven't even updated it. Uh, they're lion's fat. Oh yeah, they changed that uh, at some point between. He's the... fat. Yeah. Maybe he should eat a salad. <laughs> I still have I, I still have some of the old artwork, some of the original artwork. Uh, I had friends in the art department. I uh, need you to send that to me so I can use them for thumbnails. Uh, okay. So this is the description of Fairy Valley from this website. Um, I think this will be an entertaining read. And again, Simba, um, we release this audio into the public domain. So if you would like to use this for your own radio ads, uh, we do offer ads on our show. So you are more than welcome. I will happily take your money to advertise Fairy Valley on our show. Right? right? Yes, we'll take your money. Uh, we'll, We'll even do an introductory rate for you. A uh, hundred dollars for a uh, for a spot on the show, uh, which is lower than our normal price. But uh, well, we'll do an introductory rate for you. Okay, for, for you guys, you know, hundred bucks. You so, can start there. 
So here's what we got. The absolute core priority of Fairy Valley is to provide a real, loving, long-term home and family for furries and fur friends. There are some wonderful people in the fandom who have no one who truly cares about them in the real world. This kind of isolation is tragic, and we're putting a stop to it. Oh, yes, join my cult and you won't be lonely anymore. Oh, yes. Oh, and if you hear about this and then you ask us what's going on, you're going to get banned. Oh, oh, so if you question the group in any way, then it doesn't matter how lonely you are. It's time for you to get the fuck out. Uh Uh-huh. Got it. Loneliness and depression kill. We are a lifeline to many, as shown by the fact that several of our members have spent half their lives with us. Why would you advertise that? I mean, some of the members have been there a very long time. Most of them are completely indoctrinated. They sit around, they sit in their gilded cage, and there's some Serbian to Simba. Yeah. When I was younger, I would have given anything to have this community, people who actually give a darn about me, encourage me and nurture me. Furry Valley in its modern form is a gift to my younger self, who had none of that. And of course, the present-day furries were in exactly the same spot as I was all those years ago. You mean not being a neurosurgeon and... Uh. Have you heard? Does he still claim he's a neurosurgeon? I don't think so, but I just want to point out one thing. How he is using the story of him being younger to make up like a a bond with a person reading it. Like, let's say we have a young loner. Mm -hmm. He's trying, trying to resonate on his levels. Right. Well, and you mentioned that you felt lonely at the time when you were recruited, right? But nah, yeah, I always was a loner. I feel happy alone. Right, got it. And that's just a thing of schizophrenia. You don't have to worry. Mm-hmm. I just kind of wandered in one day and said, Ah, oh, this is kind of cool, kind of neat. Mm-hmm. We began as a small gathering of fairies in the online game RuneScape in 2005. Wow, I didn't know that. That's fascinating. As time has passed, we have grown into a thriving furry social community with over 30,000 members. Oh, inflating your membership numbers, that's a classic cult tactic. True. Well, but they, they have take about some... 5,000 members according to their own post. Lower down the page. Well, 5,000 on the Discord plus how many oh. on the different uh, plus Adding it all, doing some funny accounting, adding it all together with the telegrams and everything. Yeah, you probably have 30,000 if you have 5,000 each of the telegram channels. Got it. That are all the same people. But hey, you know, 30,000. We have around 40 events per week with 150 active staff members supporting our efforts with their amazing selfless work. Yeah, that hasn't been, this hasn't been updated in a while. At our size, costs are rising. That's no, not. <laughs> costs are, it's a free, it's a free mobile app. What costs? Uh, Simba's caviar budget? <laughs> What? what? <laughs> Simba, I told please. You. I would I love told you for you. He needs a salad. Salad, that's what he needs. Well, okay, here's clearly. what they spend their money on. Okay. They spend their money on the bot. The bot being? Uh, Kiros. The, the, the bot's name. The bot's name is Kiro? I think so. I would be shocked yes, if yes, yes, now, now, now I remember. Now I remember. Okay. Uh, the Furry Valley has a, like a universal automation bot. Yes. Bot as a programmable. It's a program, but for a Discord server for a group. Okay. Got you it. can you can tell it to like play music, remind you of tasks and etc. etc. Play music. And basically. Play music. Give out XP. Spy on people. Harvest loads of private uh, private DMs from. Screaming into the void, getting pl- tons of blackmail on people. Whoa, 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 whoa. Gra- keep, keep in mind, you're talking to grandmas in Florida. That was, that was about 17 times more information than we need in one sentence. Okay, <laughs> so we're going to pass it over to Chip, and we're going to say, uh, mm-hmm. Chip, tell us what you observed in regards to the bot, and then we're going to pass it back to Link, okay? Mm-hmm. Well, for this is- 
uh, as you mentioned earlier, somebody mentioned earlier, that the bot may be spying on users. Mm. Right, so... You may be thinking, because I have schizophrenia. No, 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 that's true. <laughs> oh, no, there the is... bot is spying on users. <laughs> there is a channel called Screaming Into the Void. Mm. Screaming you basically into the Void, okay. go there. You can type whatever you want. You can you can scream out, like in quotation marks, scream, because you cannot scream in text. Mm. Uh -huh. You type out your angers, your frustrations, every, basically anything. Even mm. private information like your social security number let's say for example i don't know what they use in america got it and whatever you type there disappears like in a void mm, okay or it gets it. directly routed to simba's personal dms <laughs> what yes uh -huh. everything is everything is redirected to the owner's di direct messages I got basically gathering data. I got bored one day on an alt account, so I decided to just go in and just started posting the most vile anti, uh, the most an vile anti, <laughs> Fairy Valley content ever. Mm -hmm. Got it. And then I got a personal DM from Simba saying, "Cut the shit out!" Wow. <laughs> <laughs> they got banned. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, so let me let me just uh, let me because I I, uh, I I understand I think what you're saying, but let me just recap to make sure that I've got because this is so insane to me that this would be the case. Okay, mm -hmm. so let me let me just put this in a con a real world context. Okay. Yep. So we're going to imagine that there is a uh, a complaint box that you know supposedly. The complaints are completely private. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like uh, an HR complaint, for example, would be would be an example of this in the real world, where uh, legally and ethically, a company is supposed to keep your information private, especially if you have a grievance against someone else. So, you know, hypothetically speaking, yep. okay, if a person goes to their HR supervisor and they say. You know, I'm really upset that my boss said this. Yes. HR in an ethical company, in a company complying with the law, it, they would say, uh, you know, oh, well, you know, we'll keep this completely private. And of course, we won't punish you for speaking about the things that are upsetting to you. Correct. So what you're saying is, in, in the hypothetical corporation of Fairy Valley, the HR department is basically just a complaint box that goes directly to the CEO so he can punish people who make a complaint. Correct. Wow. Or they can or you can use it as emotional blackmail. Wow. That I don't know is, I don't know which is worse. That is wildly wildly unethical and possibly illegal. True. Wow. Okay. Uh that is fascinating. Uh, so let's let's read the rest of this post uh, because this is this is just it's it, it's like it's like having a delicious delicious piece of cake and I'm just I'm just eating it it's just pure sugar it's it's <laughs> it gives me so much joy okay <clears throat> at our size costs are rising and so for the first time Time since our inception 15 years ago, we are asking for financial help to ensure we can continue to bring you amazing things into the future. Thank you for sharing our journey. Simba, leader of Furry Valley. Oh, yeah. So, so he's admitting that he wrote this himself. Good to know. And no mention of him being a neurosurgeon and speaking 37 languages. Oh, I'm sure that's true. <laughs> Jesus. It's like a combination of David Miscavige and Kim Jong-un. That's terrifying. <laughs> that, that may be the most terrifying sentence I've ever heard. <laughs> what, if, what if a cult leader had nukes? Uh, ooh, ooh, I don't, I don't Are like that Are you sure Scientology image. doesn't have nukes somewhere? I certainly hope they not. They probably do. I certainly hope not. They have the kind um, of money they can afford nukes. Uh, unfortunately, you are correct. Now let's let's get back to the subject at hand, which is the fact that Mr. Chris Bryant or Symbolion is a pedophile, a BDSM practitioner with underage people, making him not only a pedophile.
pedophile, but a pedophile who specifically practices BDSM with children, and three, a zoophile, meaning a person who enjoys sex with animals and torturing animals for sexual pleasure. Now, yeah, we're painting a great photo of him. We're doing what? We're painting a great photo of this guy. Well, we're just telling the accurate facts. I know. And and, and see, here's the thing. I, I keep coming back to this point because it's important. But the thing is, is that this story is so wild. Mm-hmm. This story is so absurd. Yep. That if if you just if you just gave somebody the link to all of these different articles and stuff that have been written about Fairy Valley, my mom would just go, oh, this cannot possibly be true. No one could be this cartoonishly villainous. <laughs> but this is real! Yes. Uh, Chip, you've been quiet for a bit. What do you have to say? Uh, I want to mention the, 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 the rising costs. Uh, basically, Discord bots mm. have to be hosted on an external service. Ah, okay. So that's they are not powered by the Discord's se- main servers. Got you it. have to have your own machine that runs the thing twenty four seven. Yes. Mm. The okay. other thing that they spend money on is the Minecraft server. Spend money on the Minecraft server and hosting the 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 server to host the bot that provides the XP and the yeah. stuff. Like- okay, <laughs> got it. That's where most of their costs go. To. Yeah, but I mean, that can't possibly be that much. I mean, even if it was $1,000 a month, that would be... Like, if it was $1,000 a month, that would be a very big, robust surfer. Yeah. Um, interesting. Okay. So, uh, tell, me, tell me more, because uh, before, we, before we end this, uh, this episode, uh, I want to just give, give people a little taste of what's to come. Because, uh, let me just point out to our listeners, that there is a website. Now, I do not recommend that you go to this website. I'm providing a journalistic service to the nation. Uh, This website is called Kiwi Farms, and this website is where people go to document the misdeeds of bad people. Yes. Okay? Now, it is, Mm -hmm. to be fair, if any of our listeners have heard of Kiwi Farms, it is probably in the same sentence as abuse because sometimes kiwi farms is used to harass and bully people yes now i would i would i would argue in my opinion that uh, let's just say harassing quote unquote uh, not uh, harassing is the wrong word uh, exposing the crimes of mr chris bryant or symbol lion is not bullying and harassment but rather uh trying to prevent bullying and harassment from him to his largely minors in his server. Yeah. So, uh, but again, before we, before we end this episode, let's just give people a little preview. So I'm going to just say a word, one word, and you guys give me uh, your thoughts on that uh, as it relates to Furry Valley and Simba. Okay? Okay. So here is word number one. Pedophilia. And we're going to pass the mic off to you, Chip. Degenerates like this belong on a cross. Yeah, uh, no kidding. So, uh, what what kind of uh, pedophilic acts did you uh, did you want to expose about Fairy Valley, my friend? Well, the After Dark server, as the not safe for work part of the server, where pornography and all kinds of nasty stuff is allowed, mm. Mm, it wasn't like much moderated. Got it. Got it. It basically worked like. Your basic Pornhub uh, question: Are you over eighteen? Mm. You just click OK and you enter. It's the, basically the same, but instead of clicking OK, you click on a little button with a reaction to verify yourself that you're mm. a real user. Yeah, got it. Okay, and what did you see, Link? Uh, the same thing. I mo- I was a moderator on the After Dark. Okay, and I personally removed close to a hundred children. Wow. Uh, so, so let me let me see if I'm understanding this correctly. Okay. Yes. So, uh, again, let's let's put it in a real world context for our listeners because I want I want people to understand how serious this is. Okay. 
So I want to ima- I want you to imagine a uh, a pornographic theater. Mm-hmm. Okay, a, a theater where pornographic films are shown on the screen. Yes. Okay. So to enter a pornographic theater in the real world, you have to show your ID. You have to prove that you have the legal right to be there. And you know, what, if adults want to watch pornographic films, that is their right. I, I have. I, I, people will be people. That's fine. But I want you to imagine a pornographic theater in your hometown. Yeah. Where a let's say ten year old child could just walk up to the door of the theater and tell the person who uh, is checking IDs. Um, they they let's let's say they hold up a crayon drawing that says I am eighteen. Please let me see the pornography. Mm-hmm. And the person just says, oh, well, sounds like you're 18. Come right on in. Correct. Got it. Okay. Yikes. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to say another word. And uh, Chip, I just want you to react as it, uh, again, as it relates to Furry Valley specifically. Okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. The word of the day is zoophilia. Go. Oh, fuck. <sighs> fuck. I feel the same way. People, people like this will burn in hell. Yeah, we're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, you've mentioned to me that you observed Simba being a zoophile, but I never got any details on that from you. So, just tell me what you saw, and I know this is one of the reasons why you left. So, just tell me, tell me the story as you remember it. Well. <clears throat> Well, of Simba being a zoophile, not not specifically him. Mm. I w- I wanted to mention that many people on the staff team were zoophiles. Yes, oh my God. Uh, Simba enabled zoophilia oh, through okay. Got it. through medium yeah, gonna... of the different uh, Telegram groups that he was privately a part of. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Got it. Got I managed it. to break into a couple of them, and it's... I didn't grab any screenshots because it's highly illegal shit. But. And he would brag about it. He'd brag about, brag about it in public. Brag about, about what? He'd brag about all the sexual relationships he had and the dogs that he molested. Jesus. Um, so let me let me uh, let me again make sure that I'm understanding it correctly. Yes. Okay. So Telegram again, a messaging service. Mm-hmm. So you could think about, you know, a group chat on, you know, whatever device that you like to use. So like a group text chat, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my understanding is that uh, Telegram, because it is so strong on free speech, so it's it's so strong on, you know, we're not going to delete any content unless we are legally required to do so. Yep. That people who enjoy things that are illegal, such as zoophilia, will go to Telegram and they will share these types of images of bestiality with people on that service. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Well, if somebody reports the if somebody reports this illegal activity, Telegram is obviously gonna take action and remove everything and ban the people. Uh, see, you you would think that, but uh, the thing is, is that uh, something that many people may not know is that Telegram, last I heard, it may have changed since I last heard, but last I heard, Telegram has 500 million users. 500 million, okay? Now, just again, let's put that in context. That is almost twice as many people as live in the United States. That is 10 times the number of people that live in California. That's a lot of people. Yes. 500 million, yes? Yes, 500 million. Now, how many moderators do you think that Telegram has? Uh, nowhere near enough. Well, they're obviously going to try to use bots Maybe to automate. automate. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Telegram, according to zoominfo.com, has between 25 and 500 employees. <laughs> So let's let's take that higher number and we'll say 500 employees, okay? So they have one employee for every one million 
users. Oh, wow. Well, I was way off. <laughs> so, my friend, uh, unfortunately, one of the reasons why there's such a big problem with things like zoophilia and pedophilia on Telegram is that they simply do not have enough staff to be able to moderate it. And not only do they not have enough staff, they don't want to have enough staff. They have built their business model around a lack of moderation and an avoidance of following U.S. law. Oh, boy. That's another... <laughs> right. I mean, Telegram as a service originating from Russia, I, it, <laughs> honestly, that was suspected to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, it was actually, from what I understand, it was uh, started by a group of programmers in Ukraine and um, uh, specifically a group of people who were trying to create an app where people could have just complete freedom of speech to be able to protest against their oppressive governments. Places like have... Iran, Iraq, that kind of thing. I have no knowledge about that, but I only know that the owner of Telegram, or main de developer, I don't remember, is called Pavel Durov. He's from Russia, that's for sure. Yeah, I think hmm. now is a good time for, uh, I think now is a good time to wrap it up. Sounds good. Okay, so uh, let's let's just say to our listeners that uh, we we have barely even scratched the surface of Furry Valley. So keep in mind, according to this, that they started the group in 2005. Yes. 2005, which means that this group has existed for 18 years. That's a lot of history. That's a lot of history. That's a lot of time for a lot of people to be abused. So we are going to cover it in detail. And we greatly appreciate you stopping by our, uh, our little corner of the radio program space to join us for our program today. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, tell where people can find us on the internet, and we will sign off for tonight. So uh, my name is Neil Fox. I am your furry president for life, democratically elected, of course, and you can find all the information about me and my run for the presidency of the United States at fox2028.com. All right. Outro us. Uh, welcome. <clears throat> Thank you for coming along on this glorious journey, and we will have more content to in the future. All right. Thank you very much for listening, everyone, and we will see you next week. Yes. Okay, so let me, let me read that sentence again and try to understand what they're saying. Okay. The terrorist filthy animals have had sex with goats and children for decades. Okay, I think they're talking about... I think they're talking about, like, Satanists or something. I, I think they're saying that, like, evil people have had sex with goats and children for decades. Okay. So... We're just going to replace that with bad people. Okay. Bad people have had sex with ch goats and children for decades, just like our filthy ass animals. What? Our filthy ass animals have tortured, raped, and killed children for decades. Okay, I think they're just repeating themselves. Okay. Bad people have tortured, raped, and killed children. Okay, got it. Bad people have tortured, raped, and killed children. And then the second part of the sentence is the part that is just wild to me. Okay? Okay. Their satanic chickens have come home to roost. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, let me translate it in English. Or pick Latin. Either one. Latin. Oh, okay, got it. So he emphasized it. So is he agreeing with this? Yes, darling. Okay. Filthy animals get no safe spaces and no mercy. 
I think he's talking about when he says filthy animals. I think he's talking about the uh, the furries. I'm not sure. That's this person has a very interesting way of writing. Um, huh. Wow, that is that is really 